and thank you for watching Ducoscopy TV. I'm Monica Gibson and as per usual on a Monday I'm joined by Jean-Francois Obzazek. Using FinGraph technology we'll be looking at the US dollar and how it's performing against some of its major counterparts. Jean-Francois thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you Monica for having me again. Now if we look at the US dollar we had the NFP figures on Friday which is obviously going to have quite a significant impact. What are the graphs telling us however about how it's performed over the weekend and into this trading week. Okay, well we're back on our Ducas Copy directory. As you can see we have a new layout. Very nice. We also have a few offers with Ducas Copy, so please feel free to go on the website and have a look at them. And let's go into the, the hourly mosaic of the US dollar pairs. And uh, what is quite interesting here, if we just look at the charts, is that uh, we have a, a, a significant change in the correlation mm -hmm. between uh, Euro US dollar, cable, and Australian dollar and New Zealand. This is mostly due to the weakness of uh, commodities mm -hmm. and we will have a look at Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar or more specifically Australian dollar when we look at gold later on. Okay. Let's start with uh, the major pairs i.e. euro dollar and cable and last week uh, we had euro dollar moving above the corrective targets and turning impulsive and we, will, we were still waiting for the other pairs to confirm and we had set uh, different uh, barriers when these, these trends would turn impulsive. And uh, that's what they did, uh, very short after our interview. <laughs> and uh, now they are moving in an impulsive manner. Now, is this a game-changing situation? And where uh, the dollar is going to move uh, uh, progressively uh, lower uh, over the medium term? Or is this just um, a correction up on the daily and on the weekly charts? Uh, let's have a look at the weekly mosaic okay. to try to evaluate the situation. And the pairs we're going to have a look at are Euro dollar, cable, Swiss franc, and the Japanese yen. And as we can see now, uh, Euro dollar is only in a correction up. So it's not a game changing situation yet. Uh, cable is still in a correction down, which means that uh, the strengthening of the dollar for now over the long term is still on the way. Similarly, on the dollar Swiss, um, the dollar is still moving up against the Swiss franc. It is also still moving up against the yen. And so, for now, uh, the only one which is moving in the opposite direction is euro dollar. Mm -hmm. And it's only a correction up over the long term. So we still believe that over the next quarters, or at least over the next month, we should uh, see a continuation of the strengthening of the US dollar. Okay. Uh, we will quickly match that with the weekly to get a more short-term, more medium-term perspective. And similarly, well, you're still in a bull on dollar Swiss, although the correction has been quite strong. You're still in a bull on, uh, on dollar yen. You're still in a bear on cable, and you're in a new bull on euro dollar. Now, again, uh, the oddball here is euro dollar. Yes. And, uh, but the potential is not very much further up, and the risk index is still in the red. So again here, we believe that although the move is, or the short term is probably not quite finished, uh, over the next month's quarters, we would still favor a strengthening of the US dollar. Now, if we go into Euro dollar, well, we're in a correction up over uh, the long term, over the weekly charts. Uh, we end this resume uptrend over the daily charts, and maybe I would we'll focus on it. The targets, well, we've reached them once already. The time to reach those targets is slowly coming to an end. And we're not too far from uh, the overbought zone. So although this move is underway, we don't think uh, there's um, uh, game-changing uh, potential here. Okay. Now, if we look at the hourly, well, basically, the move is getting into risky territory. We're in uh, the overbought zone in our risk in, uh, indicator. There's stress on our envelopes. Obviously, there's probably another few days to go, <laughs> uh, although we're well into uh, these impulsive targets. So we would still favor uh, the, current, uh, uh, the current situation as only being a transitory. And so uh, the potential up, at least uh, over the daily and the hourly, are, are slowly coming to an end oh. on your dollar. I see. Now let's move back to the mosaic and maybe have a look at dollar yen. Always an interesting pair. Always an interesting one. And basically, the weekly is still heading up. And let's focus on it. Uh, the targets still point to um, higher targets between 102, which has already been achieved, to 110. 
there's still quite a bit of time left and uh, the risk index is quite, uh, is, is quite high and the stress on the envelopes. However, we're still at the beginning of a move and we believe this is only an intermediate top. Mm -hmm. So following the current correction, we think that uh, dollar yen and the dollar against the yen should uh, continue to strengthen when counted in quarters. Okay. When counted in months, uh, we're into this intermediate top and we're in within a correction. Uh, the envelopes haven't turned yet. The correction doesn't seem quite over, but it does seem at the moment to be only a correction. And finally, on the early, well, the move have been, ha has been quite strong, yeah, the counter trend move. <laughs> and it seems like uh, the bottom we made last uh, Friday uh, was quite compelling with strong exaggeration on the risk index, stress on the envelopes. There's more time to go and we could expect more work to be done here. But slowly uh, we have achieved, as with uh, the euro, at least on the hourly, most of the potential. Great. So we do expect a bit more work uh, to the downside for the dollar, mm -hmm. but in the wider perspective of things, we still think the dollar is in an uptrend, counted in months or in quarters. Okay, so on the broader picture. Um, now that's very interesting. You mentioned um, commodities earlier on. Gold, obviously, with this NFP figure, it was dented slightly with um, its appeal as a hedge has mm -hmm. been hindered because against inflation has been hindered with the more jobs being added to the US economy. So how are, is that looking in terms of the graphs at present? Well, let's have well. a look. Now, gold, as we have been discussing over the last few months, uh, has a position itself in a, in, in a downtrend over the weekly, so that's kind of in quarters, so it's quite long term. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made it below our corrective targets around 1500 about uh, two months ago. Mm -hmm. Now uh, that opened the door for lower targets uh, between 9.35 and 11.55. And so there is risk there and a risk there over the next uh, uh, couple, three quarters. Um, the risk index is not showing any exaggeration yet. The envelopes are in the middle of the range, so there's no market stress there. So uh, we would watch out over the medium to long term on gold. Now, daily, we're slowly getting into a zone where gold is oversold. Mm -hmm. uh, as we've also said over the last few weeks, we think it's not quite over yet. Uh, there's probably a bit more potential in terms of price, at least to retest the lows, and in terms of time. The risk index is quite low. There's stress on the envelopes, but there's probably a bit more to go. Finally, on the hourly, well, this is, seems to be a resume downtrend situation. And, uh, and uh, over the shorter term, that means over this week, we could go retest the lows that we did previously. So looking back at that sort of 1300 mark there, 1350. 1343. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And so I just wanted to put that into perspective of the commodity driven currencies. And let's go back here to the dollar rates and maybe to the Australian dollar. And uh, basically here, well, we were in an uptrend uh, mostly fueled by uh, the carry trade and the top was made uh, two years ago. Um, it hasn't turned yet, although uh, the risk index has done its top and is moving lower. The daily is much more compelling, we had a strong downtrend, we had a strong move over the last month or so and it seems like the targets are not over. It's quite a similar picture as the one we have on gold, mm -hmm. meaning we're approaching strong exaggerations but there's a bit more time, maybe more than on gold. There's a bit more time to go, so it's too early to start uh, taking a position, a uh, counter trend in the Australian dollar. Excellent. And a similar situation on the hourly, although we're getting in really oversold uh, territory, it doesn't seem quite finished either. Okay, so just a little bit more time to wait and see. But Jean-Francois, thank you so much again for coming in and t talking it through with us. It's been very interesting once more. Thank you very much for having me, Monica. No problem. Well, that's all from Jean-Francois and myself. Please do click back to Ducoscopy for plenty more exclusive interviews and, of course, press reviews. Goodbye for now.